This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Let's join Kyle and Herschel as they discuss the specifics of the solar pump. Have the opportunity to visit with Herschel George as we're installing this solar uh, pump and tank out here. Herschel has been, uh, I'll say, the not necessarily supervisor because we saw pictures of you doing everything, but you have uh, pretty much supervised the entire project on how it's done. It looks like to me you've done a number of these. Yes, uh, many of them in eastern Kansas we are not on wells. We're pumping out of ponds and and streams, but uh, yeah, we have a number of them in. Now tell me about the pump selection and what we're seeing in the background on the solar array. The number one things that uh, we have to look at is how much volume we need, depending upon the number of cows and, and uh, the size of tank we're using. The other thing is for selecting the pump, we need to know how deep the water is. In this case, we were talking about water that was at 55 feet, I believe, was the measurement we had. And uh, you have to know that it's going to pump that 55 feet from the water surface in the well up to the top and then uh, calculate how many gallons a minute we'll have. Our goal here was to uh, pump 3 gallon a minute to 4 gallon a minute. And uh, the pump is rated at about 4.5 gallon a minute. So uh, I think we'll be okay here. Uh, we had almost the perfect day for a demonstration in that we had partly cloudy. It was amazing how the pump varied with whether the sun came out or not. I like to demonstrate it on a day that is cloudy because people get to see the opportunity from full sun, which it pumps good stream. Uh, everybody thinks it uh, is going to pump a good stream. But then when it goes behind a cloud, we get... Uh, the reduced stream. I've always told people that you need enough sun that you can see your own shadow. And when we can see our own shadow, in this case, it's just about right. You get a real good flow then. But before you have any shadow, you may or may not be getting any pumping of water to the surface. Now, in this particular case, the well already existed, but otherwise, you when when you start getting involved with the installation, you have to start with a well and then do everything after that point. I start with the water supply. Uh, and like I said, many of them in eastern Kansas were pumping out of hand dug wells, which may only be 20 to 30 feet deep. Here we've got a drilled well, and uh, sometimes we even go to wells uh, in special areas that may be two to 300 feet deep. And those require a little different pump system and a different selection process. It all comes back then to how many watts of panel we need on top. Uh, you figure out how much work you ought to do, and then you figure the wattage that you need up there on top. Here we are running about 180 watts of power off of two solar panels. And, uh, and then we run that through the control box, and that does a little voltage shift between when we have cloudy conditions and when we have full sun to optimize the operation of the pump. When we come back we'll be looking at the water storage and talk more with Herschel after that. Back to you Jamie. Folks it's time to grab a cup of coffee but don't go far away. Next is this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter.